Let's talk a little bit about helmets, their types, and why they are needed at all. That is, what they are for. I understand, but what exactly are different types of helmets for? Helmets are included in the list mandatory equipment for each soldier. Because they don't fight like in the movies. You can't fight like Rambo in a hat. <laughs> with a bandage. Or just with headphones and glasses. Like in the videos from Iraq. Running, shooting. Helmets, of course, are not a panacea. They are basically calculated for shrapnel and a pistol cartridge at most. But we had cases in the war when the helmets stopped machine gun bullets. But then, when the bullet hit on takeoff, because if they hit you from 100 meters, the helmet won't save you. But in any case, they are needed. Because there is such a magical thing as statistics. The statistics were summarized, I read them, after the Vietnam War, when the soldiers were not wearing protection. Difference between wounded and killed was just a colossal compared to the time when people wore helmets and body armor. There are two types of helmets that are most common nowadays, just like you and just like Raver, fast helmet type helmets. The first one to invent them was Ops Corps. Then others picked up on it and started to produce helmets that do not cover the ears. They were invented for special forces, when in the United States were such fast operations. When a helicopter arrived, the combat team ran out, captured bad guys and moved away. The weight of the equipment is important here. If, for example, you have to walk a lot, the ears removed up to 300 grams, another 200 to 300 grams removed some there. In total, we lost 2 to 3 kilograms of weight. I prefer a helmet with ears. Because it feels more secure. Although it doesn't add much protection, of course. A little bit. It's adding up a bit. I would recommend that your helmet be compatible with active headphones. If you don't have active headphones, you can go home without shrapnel. But without hearing and bleeding from the ears, let's just say there were also cases. Let's talk about that right away. About active headphones. Why they are important and why you should not use with earplugs like some people do. Earplugs and active headphones are completely different things. Earplugs is if you just want to reduce the noise. And active headphones reduce a certain amount of noise. For example, an explosion. It helps to protect your hearing. But, nevertheless, you should hear absolutely everything. I've already told you, as we sat in the observation post, that you have to sit and listen and see absolutely everything. And we had three different types of headphones, from cheap to expensive. Even in the most expensive active headphones, it's very loud. If a shot is fired, it's hard for you to understand where he's coming from, how far away it is, etc. That's why active headphones don't always help. On any operation, 50% success rate is communication, including internal, and with earplugs on. You might not hear your team leader. If I'm wearing earplugs, I won't hear that someone's hurt and I have to go to help this person. You can't hear which side is calling, if the enemies keep coming. Let's say there's going to be a shot. You will see that everyone is down, and you can't tell where they're shooting from. Therefore, earplugs should never be worn. At least the active headphones. Now there are different options, from cheap to expensive. Even the simplest ones, for 2,000 hryvnias, can be bought, they are available. I would recommend it, because so many people are already deaf, because they underestimated the danger of such injuries. Even the cheapest active headphones. If you don't even storm enemies and just sitting in a trench somewhere and you come under fire, then you put them on quickly and you're already protected. Mm -hmm.
Tell us more about your equipment, why it is the way it is, and maybe some life hacks. Equipment depends only on your tasks from each person. Because if you an army for a relatively long time, you will choose for yourself the equipment you need. But there is a set that everyone should have. These are the stores, the first aid kit, and at least three turnstiles, so that they are quickly accessible, so that your fellow man could have run up and used this turnstile for you. I am equipped for my tasks as a combat medic. I have a lot of stuff. I may have less ammunition, but I have a bunch of little things that I need to provide assistance. I have an escape harness. Here is a marker to write. This idea, to be honest, I, I spied on the Israelis. I once saw a video on YouTube about the equipment of medics of the Israeli army. It was very interesting. There are two pouches to medical stuff were quickly accessible. Of course, I have a medical backpack with everything I need. But in the end, I have something I can run up with and immediately provide minimal assistance. In this bag, I have a chemical light. I wear it in case I get wounded, and I'll have to keep walking in the dark to help someone else. I'm going to help the first one, I'm going to put it next to light. I'll go to the other person. In this case, I can report by radio that the wounded man is lying about there, the chemical light is a reference point. Mm -hmm. There are also additional handles. I have a special flashlight to shine in your eyes, because you can't do that with regular ones. This is a special flashlight to check that the person is no longer helpful, not to spend time on it. There are still grenades, individual first aid kit, drop bag, on my back. Bottom line, folding small stretchers, in case you need a person to carry. They don't weigh much, they don't take up much space, so I can constantly carry them with me. That's basically it, plus a cargo pouch for ammunition. Just in case the horn suddenly will be emptied so I can fill it up. I also use a flashlight on my helmet, of an American firm. Its advantage is there are two modes, a regular flashlight and ultraviolet light. In the dark, you turn on the ultraviolet light and you can see the blood stains. they're highlighted. It is better to see exactly where the person was wounded. And there's another thing, these are combat medic scissors, with insurance. That's expensive. There are ordinary ones, which are used to equip first aid kits, they're not very expensive. These are high quality, they cut much better, they are foldable. If you need to cut clothes on a person, so that already in the yellow or green zone to provide assistance, to conduct tamponade the person. This is what scissors are for. Equipment is a very individual thing and there is no rule where and what should be placed and what exactly you should have. I mean, it's clear that there are some basic things. You should have the basic things. Someone like Shepard, place it here, someone in another place. Personally, I'm on the side because it's more convenient to shoot lying down. When you're lying down, you have to squeeze your body to the ground. And in this position, on the stomach, it's very inconvenient to get to the ammo. I mean, the main thing is ammo. Everyone should have a first aid kit in quick access, so you can get it in any case. The reset bag is, for example, for empty horns so you don't have to look for them later. You've fired, you've dropped the magazine, and already attached another one. I've got larger bag in the back. I put ammo in there, other necessary things directly for the mission that is in progress. There is also an admin, where you can put all sorts of little things. And these are the basic things. I still had a pouch for grenades, but I took it off, because last time, I didn't need grenades, I took it off, so that it doesn't interfere. As for life hacks, I'm going to make a rule in our division that all individual first aid kits along with the bags were quick release. 
чтобы сам подсумок был быстросъемный, потому что тоже есть такие проблемы, когда When person injured, лежит, it is better not to turn him over. And if the pouch is not removable, to get something, you need to turn the person over, get what you need, flip back. And if the pouch is removable, you got all the necessary things in your hands. This one, yes, you have a quick release, as mine and Raver's. That is a life hack, it is better to use quick release first aid kits, like the American IFAK, or ours, for example, MTAC, there are different manufacturers. It would be better to have a quick release pouch. A few days ago, I saw that the Russians fixed their turnstiles with ties. Don't ever do that. <laughs> the turnstile should be in quick access, so that you could get it with two hands and apply it yourself, so that you don't have to cut anything open, take out. Just like that, the turnstile was pushed out and is ready for use.